Hello YouTube. So I wanted to um to just share a thought that I had. Um and it might be might be a little weird, a little crazy. Um but I think that when we think about things, when we do philosophy, uh when we practice thought, part of that is to give ourselves license to to try to rethink things in, in potentially crazy ways. And sort of see where they lead, um, and and so yeah, in that sort of spirit, I wanted to think of something, and and I partially came to this thought independently, um, but I, it also is is reflected in. Uh, Zizek's Magnus, magnum opus text, um, and I'll get to that. But I want to talk about the question, why is there something rather than nothing, the old Leibnizian question. Um, and it seems to me that this question itself is based on a certain structure of metaphor, right? Um, a certain way of sort of cognizing reality and, and how reality works, right? Um, and it, it's tied to a certain, I mean, it's tied to a certain uh, conception of, of <laughs> if, well, let me put it this way. If we accept a mathematical nominalist position, that is, um, uh, that, you know, numbers aren't real objects, but rather we, we talk about things in the world and we label things with numbers and then we can do math that way. So when I say there are two cups, it's not that there is something called two, but rather I see objects, right? It's hard to talk at this level, but I see objects and they're, and I label the quantity of them as two, right? And then I see two more and I label the quantity of those as two, etc. So this is a mathematical nominalist position, um, and it seems to me to be the more the most moderate position in in the philosophy of mathematics. Um, and I could go into that in a lot more detail, but if we accept that kind of position, um, rather than a mathematical Platonist position, um, it gives us license to say that when we say there is something rather than nothing. Um, there's, there's obviously an implicit quantification, right? Nothing is zero. Something is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Etc. Now that becomes a structure of metaphor, right? Rather than something ontological it becomes a way that we think about reality, um, rather than something implicit in reality itself. It becomes a labeling scheme. Uh, it becomes a, a way of attaching words to an experience, right? Um, and so as such, I think that there can be other ways of thinking about, about that question, right? So again, the question, why is there something rather than nothing, implies a certain kind of metaphor, right? Particularly a quantitative metaphor. That's not necessary in thinking about the world as such. Um, and I think it might be the wrong metaphor. And I don't know, I haven't developed developed any of this out into into really like coming to grips with the ontological consequences. Um, but what I think we might be able to say is that there's within that metaphor structure why is there something rather than nothing there's a there's a conception of this bootstrapping right there's a conception of upbuilding right and the reason why this question looks so difficult to to think about or to answer is because there is this bootstrapping right it's because there is this this upbuilding and so you need you need something to appear right that wasn't there before 
and where does that something come from, right? Well, it can't come from anywhere because there's nothing, right? So it, it looks like an impossible sort of question. But what if we frame that question differently, right? What if it's not that there is, or what if a better way to think about it is not that there is more than nothing, but, and this is where the Zizekian part comes in, it's the title of his book, what if there is less than nothing, right? What if instead of thinking of there is nothing and then we build up from that, what if we conceive of reality as nothing falls apart, right? Um, so in some sense, instead of putting nothing at the bottom of our ontological hierarchy, um, we put nothing at the top of our ontological hierarchy. And reality is the falling apart of nothing, right? And I mean, you can, you can imagine, like, you can imagine a number of ways to, or you can imagine consequences in dealing with that. Um, but it seems to me that, mind you, like all I'm, all I'm trying to articulate here is a different way of thinking, right? A different way of thinking about why is there something rather than nothing. Um, rather than, I'm not trying to make any strong ontological claim, but rather I'm trying to propose a way of thinking about ontology. Um, and it seems to me that we can we can just conceive of reality as this this ever falling apart ness, right? Um, and I mean, you, you you see this a lot in sort of Eastern philosophy, everything to do with transience, right? Transience becomes an ultimate ontological principle, or as Maya Su ventures, contingent, the necessity of contingency, right? It's another way of saying that. So why is there something rather than nothing? Because everything falls apart. <laughs> and nothing itself, like the moment of creation, right? The moment where things come into being is not something being added, but rather something falling out of, or this, this nothing falling apart. So yeah, it's just a thought, and I would do more thinking about it. Um, but I'm curious if, if that is, is meaningful to anybody who's watching this video. So comment, like, subscribe, etc.